you're thinking. Um, yeah. Then again, it could be a real threat. Don't relax on it. I'm not telling you that's what it is. Yeah. But, um, I was hoping you know, it's FBI. I hope the FBI gets involved in this. This is just insane. Right, right. Well, <laughs> you know, if, but um, I don't know what the cover. <laughs> Well, the, you know, the, three, the only reason they would be involved if, if there's a cover-up and it's involving the judge or, you know, something uh-huh. like that, that would be one of the reasons. And then also because, you know, I don't know, I, you know, the FBI covers a lot of different things. And if involving a child, if you've got someone's attention over there, they're going to get on board with it. Um, they're just, you yeah. know, they're going to do what they do, you know. Yeah. I hope they start looking at us. Someone needs to. Right. It's just... I just found out at court from Aaliyah's attorney that I guess APD has a case open against him right now. APD? I didn't know that. Why, why do they yeah, have a... Auburn, for Auburn what? Police Department. I don't know why they have one open against him, but I guess they do. That's just what I've heard. I don't know if they opened one with CPS, because I know they work hand-in-hand sometimes together. Right. Or or if, because so many people have been bombarding them with calls, or what, I don't know why they have a case open against him, though. So... I hope they actually, like, do research this time, but who can say? <laughs> they haven't yeah. contacted any of us still, so. And uh, your sisters, you, how much, how many, or how much family have you got in that area, Connie? Um, I have my aunt, my uncle, um, they live a couple of blocks away, and they have three children. Okay. And then I have my nana, she lives with them, and then my brother and sister are here. They've been here for a couple of months from Italy. They're just in LA for a while, and then um, my other sister that I live with. Okay. She's my younger sister, Kara. So uh, Kara and I live together, and and that's the only family that I have around here right now. My dad lives in Alaska, and we all haven't had a relationship with our mother since we were all around the age seventeen. Okay. And that's no. I just I didn't know if you were up there by yourself or you had some family in the area. Um, and that was a question that I got answered the other day. Somebody said your sister was there, but I just was trying to find out: Do you have a support network there of people? Um, you know that you can yeah. talk to or maybe go stay with if things get real hairy. You know. Yeah, yeah. I, um, and my boyfriend who I've been dating in the last two years, he's been through this whole thing with me, so. Right. Um, that I have him to lean on to right now, so. That's good. So it, my suggestion would be to have some people stay there uh, or have somebody staying with you or be staying with somebody until, you know, because if this thing gets heated up, you're going to get a lot more attention. And yeah. if it's not the FBI, um, they'll be looking for an opportunity to catch you by yourself. And you don't need to allow, you don't need to have that opportunity present itself ever. So uh-huh. my best advice to you in, in the meantime is to find, you know, let everybody know you need somebody with you at all times and you need a cell phone okay. on you at all times. And if possible, okay. some mace or a taser, um, or if you're able to carry a handgun, that would be even be a potential for you. Um, yeah, see, I can't even do that because of the restraining order. Okay. Okay. Well, that's fine. No, it's like, it's stupid because it's like here, he is the one stalking me and threatening my life and he has a restraining order on me to where I can't even protect myself when he is doing this, you know? So it's like, it's really frustrating the way the system is working so against me and for him, right. you know? It's like, now Leah and I are the ones in danger and he's pretending he's the one in danger. What, um, like, he has everything so flipped around. Do you have Do you have a taser that you can get or can you go, Do you are you in a position to go buy one? Oh, well, I have, um, I carry a digital camera in my purse because his dad had came to the visitation and was hanging outside of visitation too so I took pictures of him like right. I'm just ready to snap pictures and take <laughs> videotape of anything weird going yeah that's a good idea but a, a taser what I mean by that it's an electronic self defense um, deal that shocks you know if somebody comes up and grabs you you, you shock them with it and it oh. like yeah that type oh, of oh no deal. I haven't I, I, I would I would that. look at getting one of those and then also yeah. some mace and keep it on your keychain um, and okay. do not be alone, Connie. That's the biggest thing. If you think you're being followed, do not allow the opportunity for them to catch you by yourself because that's okay. that's what they're looking for. If they're going to do something to you, you know, okay. um, that's the worst thing you can do. If you go to the grocery store, take somebody with you. Um, if you go to work, you know, somebody needs to ride with you or needs to drop you off and pick you back up, you know. Okay. Um, you know, co-worker, whatever you can do, but do not let them catch you alone. If you have an accident, lock your doors. If somebody hits you and it's not your fault, lock your doors and call 911 and stay inside the car till the police get there. Do not get out of the car to talk to somebody. 
Okay. okay. If you find okay. yourself in a parking lot where you are by yourself, if uh -huh. you see anything that's taped to a window, once you get in the car, don't get back out and get it. Just go okay. ahead and drive out of the out of that situation, get to a safe zone where there's a lot of people. And if anyone does approach you, yell your head off. Attract as much attention as you can to what's going on. Okay. So those are just that's some precautions you can take. If the you know worst case scenario, I don't want to scare you, but I also want to make sure you know you know right now is probably not a good time with you thinking this for you to be by yourself in any aspect. Yeah, not at all. No. Like I'm even afraid for my sisters just because in his mind anything he could do to hurt me he would do. You know. So it's like, if he had to hurt my sister to try to hurt me, that's, that's an option to him. So. Right. right. Um, I, you know, I hate that you're in the middle of this, that's for sure. You know, I really do. Uh, but you got, you know, there's a lot of people with a lot of attention on this thing. And, you know, it's not going away and we're not letting it just die out. So, yeah. uh, I talked to Simon and, uh, I think it's his wife yesterday for a few and minutes. Dan. Yeah, I talked to them yesterday from BNN, and uh -huh. we did uh, we discussed your what's going on with you a little bit, but also some other cases we got working. They're going to start picking these up, but they're not going to let yours go until they see it through, which I thought was a great thing because you know a lot of times people are going for the headlines, and what uh -huh. that showed is that they're willing to stick this one out with you uh, for Aaliyah, not necessarily you, yeah. but to get Aaliyah justice because at one end or the other, Connie. This child's being abused. At one, it's either what you're saying or it's not. And the child's yep. in the middle of this. Yep. And if it is what you're saying, it's it's awful, you know? Yep. Yep. I don't need taking care of it. I'm glad they're digging for the truth. Because if somebody actually digs and actually talks to somebody about all the two pages of people that haven't ever been contacted, they're going to see a lot of sick information coming their way. That what, the um, police never bothers to even investigate. I tell so, you what, have you got those people? Can you email me the list of them, and would it be all right for me to contact them? Yeah, I can send you um, what I sent Jan and Simon if you want me to. Yeah, I would do that. Um, let me get contact numbers, and I'll set up a time okay. to call them, and I'll like go over a few of them with you beforehand. Or actually, I'll just call okay. them and as I can, and and see what their you know what their thoughts are on it. Get their okay. side of the story, and then post another video up with them talking on it. Okay. I can also send you um, letters that I have saved in the computer. They're not the originals because the originals are filed in court with their signature, but all their contact information and phone numbers and stuff are on there if you want to read those. I can send you all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I can <laughs> okay. send you all the letters that I just forwarded to the DA and to the sheriff and to everybody if you want all that stuff, too. All right. All right. Um, yeah, I think that would be a good thing to do is to videotape those calls and post those up on the blog and then as people start discovering what's going on with you or they want a reference point, you can point them back to the blog and say, look, I've got witnesses. Go listen to what they said. Here's, you know, here's the tape on it. Okay. So, cool. um, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that all that's going to do is help build your case up, and then it's going to get out there that look, it's not just her. It's nine, ten, eleven, twelve people saying the same thing, and still nothing's being done. So, you know. Yeah. Um, just adding another layer in there, you know? Yep. So, yeah, I'll send all that information to you. And I think um, my entire family and my boyfriend, I think, are, I think everybody's thinking about doing that radio show for Jan and Simon tomorrow, so... Right, I've got to post up, uh, yeah, I've got to send out an email on that, and I've got to get with Simon and them to make sure that that's what they're going to do. Um, okay. They had asked me to get the word out on it, but, yeah, I definitely want to do that. Um... I was thinking about doing it myself because I really don't feel like following this restraining order because it's violating my civil rights. <laughs> have you have you talked to an attorney about that yet? No, I haven't. Okay. Um. I probably should because. Yeah, I would. I'm just, I'm just so mad at how what they're doing to me. I just feel like rebelling against it because it's just like, hi, I'm trying to protect my daughter, and you people are trying to shut me up, and you won't even bother looking at the evidence. So. Right. Like just screaming from you know on the top of the world right now to everybody like look at the situation would you please right what well, um have you I, I just feel like you know if I was to do something like that and do the the phone thing the interview that you know at least people would get to hear that my side and then everyone else is that have seen this go on too and maybe enough people will start picking up on it and start digging into it to even where, if I do get thrown in jail for it, then the whole world knows the truth now, you know, so, right. I don't know, I'm just trying to figure out what's, what's best and the best procedure to go 